Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes on this podcast kind of showing you the basics of how to use Tax App. Once you've installed it on your computer, uh, then you need to uh, set it up and get the client information inside it. Uh, you do not need to worry about uh, breaking it or uh, that sort of thing as long as you you're not set up to e-file anything so nothing's going to go into the IRS uh, from this uh, software. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. We're just going to use it to pre prepare and print returns. So when you open it up, you're not going to have any clients. Uh, it's going to bring you to this client manager. Uh, and the first thing that you're going to want to do, uh, uh, just a little bit about updates. Probably the first thing you want to do is check for updates. If you get any trouble with that update, uh, you need to use the link that is in Desire to Learn back out in the, the learning, mod, learning module uh, that says uh, updates. Uh, that will take you directly to the, you might say, the uh, old-fashioned way of doing updates rather than through the, through the software. I had, when I installed Tax Act, I had to do it that way. Um, I'm hoping that that will be not the case for you, but if so, you will have to do the update there. You won't be able to uh, print returns, things like that. You'll be able to continue to use the software, uh, but you will not be able to print it, uh, anything you do. So uh, check for updates. If that doesn't work or you get an error message, then take the uh, update. Uh, the old-fashioned way. So here is your client manager. You can add a client, open a client that you already added. Uh, you can edit the information. You can remove a client all from this uh, particular spot. So you're going to first add a client. You'll need to know information like name and and uh, social security number, that sort of thing, to set up a client. Um, so I'm going to go, once you've got that, go into a client, set it up. This is the stuff that it will ask at basic information worksheet. Uh, you then have it as, in a file format. It's, everything's filed in this kind of, uh, you know, different file folders. And any form you want to use uh, is going to be found or should be found in the forms and schedules. So you see way more than you're going to want to use, especially uh, initially. But you find the 1040, the one that you're going to use most likely, up at the top. And notice what you've done here is that the federal form 1040 is there for your client. Okay? So if you double click on that it's going to bring up what it looks like at any given time okay um, and then you can edit here on the actual return the forms add details for instance you may put comments or things to help somebody else understand what you did or open a supporting form, okay? So for instance, I was on the 1040, okay? Let me go back there. And I clicked on address because it's, it's not entered. I click on open a supporting form. And where does it take me? It takes me to the federal basic information where I had failed to put in the address when I set up this client. If I had put the home address there, it would show up on this federal form 1040 uh, as an address. So that's so you can set it all up and then it will flow to these forms or if it's not there on the form you can uh, go backwards you will and, and fill in the information. So things are added uh, here, 
any other forms you need. So for instance, when you get looking at itemized deductions, you, you go to Schedule A and see since that nothing's been entered, you're going to click on Add Copy. So this isn't needed. Uh, everybody gets a, a federal form, you know, form right to start off with, but anything that is optional, because you don't have to file a Schedule A, you would add a copy, or, or Schedule B, add a copy, all right? And then, again, on like any of these, these places, you can put in a uh, detail, so in this case, you could describe what the, the interest was or something, put a note to yourself, or a supporting form, okay, uh, where you could have gotten some of the information having to do with uh, interest. So for instance, if the, this client received a 1099 INT, you could add a copy to that and you could actually fill it in with the payer's tax ID number, name, how much interest income, which would then flow back to uh, the form B, okay? So you're, you're literally drilling down or through to the original form. So that's kind of how all of the forms work as we learn about them uh, throughout the semester. Uh, we'll see how the different forms operate and there's a lot of illustrations in your uh, textbook and these should mirror that in, in most respects. Uh, however, uh, just remember this text, this text was published before the end of the year and there were some last minute changes and so some of the forms may not reflect those latest changes and that's why we when we use Tax Act, we check for uh, updates because those things are being updated and we want to make sure we use the latest one. Uh, and so there might be some, some uh, subtle differences between uh, what it looks like in Tax Act, which should be up to date, and your textbook, which doesn't have the ability to be updated uh, since it was printed. So. That should help you, and again, just kind of play around, look for how things work. You can't break anything. You can always add, uh, you know, a dummy client or a sample client or, you know, some friends' information just to see how it works. Uh, and you can, even when you're doing your, your homework, the tax returns uh, later on, you can start, and if you mess up and you can't figure out how to fix it, you can always add a, the, the client again uh, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, now, be, one thing that you should realize, uh, and I'm not sure what we, should, what we should do about this for sure, because your, your examples and such and the software calls for social security number, which is fine uh, and when you print that as a PDF and submit it through the Dropbox on uh, Desire to Learn or Brightspace, it will give us no problem. However, if you were to print this as a PDF, oh and let's, um, that printing, I should is right here, the printing right here. Um, so the, the return and, and send the output to PDF and then you just figure out where it is. It's going to put it in your, on your computer and then that, that's saved and then you can upload it into the um, Dropbox for turning it in. But um, if you happen to say um, wanted to email me a this you know a copy of a form just to ask for my input or something outside of the Dropbox, my email program will will scan things and when it sees something that looks like a Social Security number, 
it'll get bounced back to you and it won't get to me. So as long as you're using the Dropbox, uh, then you're, you're fine. But if you email something, uh, it could be a problem without taking the social security number off. And this software, a lot of software, and I haven't tried it, uh, may not allow you to put in like dummy social security numbers like XX and stuff like that. So, uh, that, and, it, and my email program doesn't care if you put in a wrong social security number or 99999. If it looks like a security number, meaning it has three, then a dash, then two, then a dash, then four, it assumes it's a social security number and it rejects the email. So just be aware of that. So, all right, so play around, um, get used to it before we have a chance to actually do a tax return. And if you have questions, please uh, post them in the, in the discussion board. Thanks.